this is the continuation of our module on cauchy gursa theorem now in the previous module we have seen some topological terminologies so for example what is simply connected domain what is multiply connected domain and other terminologies and we have also seen what is green's theorem now these things are going to be needed to describe uh, cauchy's theorem and then uh, in future we will see what is cauchy gursa theorem which is the generalization of cauchy's theorem now uh, let's see uh, what is cauchy's theorem so if we have an analytic function in a simply connected domain d now we have seen this in our previous module what is a simply connected domain d and if f prime is continuous in the domain d and furthermore if c is a simple closed contour that lies entirely in this domain d then this contour integral of f of z along this contour c is equal to 0 now to prove this theorem we are going to need some basic calculation and mainly we are going to need uh, green's theorem okay now let's see how to prove this theorem now uh, let's begin with this uh, function f of z so let's say it has some real and imaginary part so the real part is u of z plus iota v of z okay now this closed simple closed contour c let's say this has this parameterization x of t plus iota y of t and this t varies between a and b okay and uh, of course uh, if we are going to use uh, green's theorem then uh, we are going to require that it is uh, positively oriented and in the last step we will see that uh, if we can prove this uh, for positively oriented uh, simple closed contour then uh, for the negatively oriented uh, it is going to be extremely simple so it is positively oriented okay so if this happens then uh, let's see what is uh, contour integration so we can evaluate this contour integral by evaluating the following uh, integral which is uh, integral of a complex valued function of a real parameter t and the variation of t is from a to b now uh, this is going to be equal to a to b and f of now uh, this uh, function f is equal to uh, u of z plus iota v of z so we can uh, just say that this is equal to u of z of t plus iota v of z of t okay so this is our f of z of t and then z prime of t so z prime of t is x prime of t plus iota y prime of t dt okay now uh, let's uh, multiply uh, these terms so what we get a to b so u so for simplicity i'm just going to write down instead of writing u of z of t i'm just going to write down u so u x prime minus v y prime okay so dt so this, this is the real part okay plus the imaginary part iota a to b and then u y prime and then plus v x prime dt so this is uh, the real and imaginary parts if we uh, expand this uh, uh, contour integral of f of z along this contour c okay now let's move on to the next step now uh, what we have proved so far so we have proved that this is equal to a to b u x prime minus v y prime dt plus iota a to b u y prime plus v x prime dt now we can also write it down in the following way a to b u x prime dt minus v y prime dt plus iota a to b u y prime dt plus v x prime dt now what is the advantage of uh, writing down uh, in this way so we know that x is a function of t so this implies that if we calculate the differential of x 
then it is going to be equal to the derivative of x and dt. Okay, so that's why we can replace the x prime dt with dx. And similarly, y prime, so if y is a function of t, okay, so in this case y is a function of t, so this implies dy is going to be equal to y prime dt. So this y prime dt is basically dy and this is dx and similarly this y prime dt is dy this x prime dt is dx so uh, using uh, these values we can write down this contour integral in the following way dz so this is going to be equal to a to b u dx minus v dy plus iota u dy plus v dx okay now uh, this is uh, the kind of form which we have seen in the statement of the Green's theorem and uh, so this is a line integral of this uh, function and uh, we can uh, convert this into a surface integral and uh, since uh, this uh, line integral is around the simple closed contour C because when uh, t is equal to a this is the initial point and when t is equal to b this is the final point so basically we are uh, integrating so this line integral is over this contour c okay now uh, the green's theorem will convert uh, this line integral into surface integral now let's see uh, how we convert these two line integrals let's call them uh, first and second line integrals into surface integral okay now let's begin with our first uh, line integral so u dx minus v dy so this is going to be equal to r and uh, whatever is with uh, y is basically q and whatever is with x is basically p and we uh, write down qy in other words the partial derivative of q with respect to x so what do we get so minus vx and uh, with a minus sign we write down p y so what do we get in this case u y okay so the ordering of dx and dy uh, is uh, not important but let's say this is dx dy or we can write it down as dy dx but then we have to change these limits so it is uh, it, it is not important so let's just fix it to dx dy okay and let's uh, let's move on to the second line integral so u dy plus v dx so this is going to be equal to so using once again the Green's theorem, so this is going to be equal to, so this is uh, uh, Q now, okay, so let's compare it with the P dx, okay, so P dx plus Q dy, and uh, this is Q now, so what do we do? So we take the partial derivative of Q with respect to X, so UX minus, and we take the partial derivative of P with respect to Y, so V, Y, and then we have dx dy okay now let's remove these okay so uh, these are the two uh, integrals so let's call them uh, the third and fifth or let's just call them star and two star now uh, we know that uh, f prime exists so if a function is uh, differentiable if a complex valued function is differentiable then it implies that it satisfies Cauchy Riemann equations. So this implies that F satisfies CR equations. So what are CR equations? So CR equations are ux is equal to vy and uy is equal to minus vx. So if this happens, then this implies that uh, these two integrands, so th these are going to be zero because uh, if uh, ux is equal to vy then this becomes zero okay so this becomes zero and similarly if vy is equal to minus ux then this is also zero so if both of uh, these two integrals are zero then uh, obviously uh, what are we going to get so this implies that the contour integral of f of z along c uh, dz which is equal to this a to b which is basically this uh, first integral along this uh, c u dx minus v dy plus iota a to b u dy plus v dx 
this is going to be equal to zero okay so if this is going to be equal to zero then this is the end of the proof and uh, uh, last comment is that uh, we we assume that c is positively oriented now what happens if c is negatively oriented so this case is done now uh, second case or case two is if c is negatively oriented so if c is negatively oriented then this implies that minus c is positively oriented okay and we can just prove the result from minus c and we also know that uh, the integral of f of z along minus c dz is equal to minus uh, the contour integral of f of z along this contour c so using this we can easily prove that uh, this uh, integral is zero okay so that's why we assume that uh, c is positively oriented because the negative orientation negative orientation can be dealt in a very simple way now let's see some uh, consequences of this Cauchy's theorem. Okay. Now uh, consider uh, this function, which is exponential of z square plus one, and we want to see that whether this uh, integral is equal to zero or not. Now we know that exponential of z and z square plus one, being a polynomial, are entire functions. So in other words, they are always differentiable. So if they are differentiable then uh, the derivative is also going to be okay so uh, continuous okay so uh, let's see uh, if we take f of z is equal to exponential of z squared plus one now let's uh, calculate the derivative of this function now this is going to be equal to exponential of z squared plus one and then by chain rule just calculate the derivative of the inside function now this is uh, once again differentiable and hence continuous so if it is continuous and uh, uh, this c is inside the complex plane it is a simple closed contour in the complex plane now this complex plane is simply connected okay so uh, we are not taking any subset of uh, the complex plane we are taking the entire complex plane as the domain and this entire complex plane is simply connected so this condition is satisfied and also the derivative is continuous f is analytic so all, all the conditions of cauchy's theorem are satisfied so this directly implies that this exponential of z square plus one dz along c is going to be equal to zero now let's move on to another example now once again this example is very simple because the integrand is a basically polynomial and we know that polynomials are entire functions always differentiable at each and every point of the uh, complex plane and the domain is once again this complex plane which is simply connected so the domain is simply connected the curve is simple closed contour and the integrand is an entire function in other words not only the function is analytic but its derivative is also continuous so all the conditions of cauchy's theorem are satisfied hence this uh, contour integral is equal to zero by cauchy's theorem so uh, this is uh, our cauchy's theorem if f is analytic and uh, it is uh, uh, in a simply connected domain d and f prime is continuous in that domain d and moreover if we have a simple closed contour entirely contained in that simply connected domain d then the contour integral of f of z along that contour c is zero we have seen the proof of this result and we have seen some consequences of this thing as well but there are going to be many more consequences which we will see in our future discussion so this is the second part uh, of our discussion and in the next part we will see generalizations of cauchy's theorem uh, for example we will see what is cauchy gorsa theorem and uh, its consequences